so now everybody's sort of a little bit um, larger. Um, now, actually, uh, one of the reasons why I do what's called fairy tale drama uh, is, which is a combination of fairy tales and psychodrama, is because um, I've felt that the landscape, that the landscape of fairy tales is important. And sometimes that gets lost if we go too quickly into an interpretation. Now, I grew up in Ireland, and Ireland to a certain extent in itself is a bit of a fairy tale, which I hope to explain. Uh, first of all, um, I was in a private school for about six years from, let's say, my fifth year to my 11th year. And there were only five or six pupils run by a German baron and baroness who, who fled Germany in the Nazi period. Now this place where this school was at the back of beyonds. It was a lovely old house surrounded by uh, marshlands um, and lakes and rivers. And so we would play in this environment, making even fairy forts. So using sods of earth and building passageways and making round edifices in the midst of marshlands. Uh, psychodrama, I come back to the fairy tales, uh, but is, that, that uh, quote is, was very helpful because um, you don't, in psychodrama, you don't just read the fairy tales, but as I will show later on, it's an enactment. So you feel the fairy tale with your body and with your soul. So once you have, so you're enacting the fairy tale, it's a huge constellating factor. Something uh, the fairy tale itself with the archetypal figures in it actually become alive as you enact the actual fairy tale. So that was that quote. The next quote, let us move on. Well, this is another thing which is an evidence of um, how the fairy world stayed alive in Ireland. So this is a story of the Blasket Islands a story from the Blasket Islands. And these were islands off the west coast of Ireland. And it was known for its many storytellers and writers. They kind of, just before it was evacuated, because of the very, very difficult life you had on the Blasket Islands. There's hardly enough food, you depended on fish, you depended on import from the mainland. But as the potato crops grew less and less, in the 1950s, it was no longer able to be inhabited and finally was given up. What then in the discussion afterwards, because afterwards, so something has really happened, there's been a splitting process. One, cis, one part of Mary, shall we say, we can see them as two parts of one, has through her work achieved some kind of strength and power and awareness of herself as a woman, as an independent, and the other is still lost in well, as one person says, uh, um, 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 I forget the name, but uh, yeah, some has lost in the blackness of life, the blackness, the darkness of life, is the unconsciousness. Uh, because they didn't take the opportunity to connect with the other world, with Baba Yaga, with the sensuality of life. Instead, they opted for a life like of a Paris Hilton. I don't say Paris Hilton is like that because I don't know her, but that sort of image that gets projected. So um, then to conclude then when we discuss this tale, we talk about um, um, its general significance, that it's a tale about ecology, I think, at taking care of nature. If we just abuse it, use it for our own ends, use it just simply for financial reasons and so forth, then we lose something fundamental in ourselves. We split ourselves. We become seduced by, as what Jung would say, the thousand and one distractions of material comfort. And I think that's a bit the story of our times. That's why I use this tale, because it has an overall significance. 